Hey what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial on java programming and today's topic as the title of the video suggest is java pass by value versus pass by reference so we've talked about this topic briefly in previous couple of video tutorials especially the wrapper class video tutorial in this playlist so if you are new on this channel if you don't know we already have a lot of tutorials on java programming so i'll link the entire playlist and if you are new you consider subscribing to this channel because there are a lot of information technology and computer science oriented video tutorials on this channel so yeah coming back to the topic we have briefly talked about this topic but i never made a separate video tutorial wherein i could tell you what exactly happens behind the scenes and what is the basic difference between pass by value and pass by reference in java so if you are coming from a c++ background we have pass by value pass by reference and pass by address in c++ so i have covered that also on this video tutorial so it's kind of similar in this java case but since in java everything is objects the pass by reference is slightly different so yeah we'll directly jump into the programming aspect and then we'll see what happens behind the scenes so the last part of this video is very important because the first part would be i'll just show you a program example wherein we can see the differences between pass by value and pass by reference however the last part would be we'll go behind the scenes and see what happens in the memory when the individual programs are being executed okay so make sure you watch this video till the end because then i'll give you a visual representation so starting off i've already typed out the program so that i don't waste a lot of time in just typing it from the scratch so as you can see on the screen i have already opened up my netbeans id and in our main class which has the main method what i'm doing is i've created a static method which says static void display primitive okay so you can name it anything i just have made display primitive and what i'm doing is i'm passing an integer variable so this is a primitive integer variable so by default in java it is pass by value okay so what we are doing is we are actually passing the value in this method so the ideology here is in the main method i'm going to create an integer variable so you can see int a then i'm going to say before the function so before calling this display primitive i'm just going to print out the value of a which is 5 over here you can see then i'm going to call the method and inside that method what i'm saying i'm just printing inside display primitive method and i'm passing the value by pass by value right so primitive data types in java always are pass by value so keep this in mind i'll in fact even put it on the screen somewhere all the primitive data types that is int boolean char double float all of them are always passed by value by default and inversely or in a, in opposite to that all the object types so all the non primitive types are passed by reference so we'll come to the reference part in a minute and we'll see the difference also but just keep this in mind because this is a very important point so yeah in the display primitive method what we are doing is we are passing this a integer variable as passed by value so when this value is passed over here a new variable int a is created for this method okay so the scope of that that variable that is this new int a is only existing in this method so here what we are doing is that five value is being copied in a new variable int a for this method and then we are saying a is equal to a plus pi which is 5 is equal to 5 plus 5 that is going to be 10 right so that 10 is going to be stored in a and then that is going to be printed and once we come out of the function the scope of this function is exited right so now that int a which existed inside this display primitive method does not exist so then again when we print system dot out dot print l after the function the value is not going to stay incremented because this a is not equal to this a there are two different a's so we'll see that in a minute when we go behind the scenes also so let me just run this and let's first see the output so i'm just running this program and there you go you can see before the function a value is 5 so let me just reduce the size okay so when i created the int a in the main method and i printed before function value so the a value is 5 then we called the display primitive method so inside display primitive method what we did is we incremented the value so we created a new variable which was only existing inside the method okay so here this a is not equal to this a so there are two different variables at two different memory locations so we'll see that behind the scenes so that value is become 10 over here because we passed it by value so the value of 5 is being copied in a new variable named a also so they are the same names but they are two different variables because they have two different scopes and then that is added with 5 so the value becomes 10 and when we come out of the method then and i again print value of a so this a is printed over here and not the a which was inside the method because that method has exited over here and its scope is over so this was a programming result and you can see the output so here you can see 
we could not or we were not able to change the value of this integer a which was there in the main method and the reason why we could not do that is because we passed the value by pass by value methodology and not pass by reference so let's jump to the visual representation so i'll jump to the blackboard and show you what exactly happened okay so as you can see on the screen i have a blackboard and this is the exact program that we typed in the netbeans id so we have our static void display method over here you can see that and then we have our public static void main method over here so this is that and i've also printed out the output in blue over here just for reference purpose so what exactly happens in the memory i'll show it over here on this screen so when we execute the program in the memory of course the ram so this memory is the stack memory so in our ram we have two different types of memory that is stack and heap so those are concept of data structures you don't need to really get into the details about those right now this is in stack because we are dealing with pass by value so in the main method let's say this is that memory block okay so every memory block has address so i've just marked the main method in yellow so in that we have declared int a equals to 5 okay so there is a new variable so that is created somewhere in the memory so let's say this is hash 5506f and something like that it has some address we've named it as a and the value inside this variable is 5 then we print out system dot out dot printl and before the function a okay so this first line is printed on the output screen now what we do is we call display primitive which is another method which has certain other memory location okay so main method is stored over here in this block let's say the starting address is something like hash 00f and something like that however the another method is stored at some other location so display primitive might be stored at some other hash ff a something like that so now what we are doing is we are giving it a call right so we are calling display method from the main method and we are passing the value of a so a call is given to this method from the main method at certain line right now what we are doing is and we are passing the value of this variable as pass by value so when we pass by value we are literally copying this 5 and passing it into a new integer variable which is again named as int a over here so here what is going to happen is the first line is going to be printed that is system dot out dot printl and inside display primitive method so this line is printed the next step that is happening is this int a is created so this int a is directly created when we actually call the method because we have passed 5 and this 5 is now copied into a integer variable so another integer variable is created which is stored in some other memory block you can see hash cfa something like that so the addresses are random again we give it a same name and this value 5 is now copied inside this so you can see in the memory that two different variables are created one variable is in the main method and the value 5 is copied in another variable whose name is a but it is inside this display primitive method so at this line what we are doing is a is equal to a plus 5 so a value is 5 right and assignment happens from right to left so 5 plus 5 is going to be 10 so the new value is going to be 10 so now the new value is going to be 10 over here and then we say system dot out dot printl in a so since it is inside the display primitive method this a is printed so that's why a value is 10 over here which is printed now what happens is this is the last statement of the display method display primitive method right so once this statement is executed the scope of this entire method is erased right so we are coming outside this display method and coming back to the main method so now again the transfer is made to the main method so all the memory that was allocated for the display primitive method and the variables that were created inside display primitive method are erased so this entire block is now erased so the int a which was inside display primitive does not even exist anymore so lastly after the function a is equal to 5 is printed which is inside the main method so this is the last line and this a is this integer variable which was there which was made initially in the main method and it's it's not this one okay so this one is already eliminated when we came outside the method so now you get the idea right that is the reason why we could not change the value of this of this variable because this variable was inside main method and we passed it by value so there is the value was copied and new variable was created so this was pass by value and this is the default method when we pass primitive data types into methods and we give a function call or method calls so that time when we are passing primitive data types it's always pass by value and the actual integer variable values are not changed okay a new variable is created inside the methods if you are trying to manipulate them and once the method is done executing when we come back to the main method or come back to the calling method 
those values do not affect the original calling methods variables okay so it's a little bit confusing you might seem but once you see the memory allocation you pretty much get an idea right that two different variables are created and the scope is different so this was pass by value let's try to see what is pass by reference then so let's jump to the program now so i'm just gonna change the program over here okay now the program is slightly changed so we have our same class but inside that we have a new method which is static void display array and not display primitive okay so now we know that in java array objects i mean array variables are always objects okay so they are treated as objects and they are reference variables and they are not primitive data types they are not treated as primitive data types they are treated as object data types so we already talked about arrays in detail in this tutorial playlist so if you don't know what arrays are you can check it out so yeah starting off with the program explanation again in the main method what i'm doing is i'm creating an integer array which is of size 3 and I'm storing values 2, 2 and 2. So I'm just hard coding them right now. This is just for reference purpose, just for understanding the pass by reference concept. So before I call the method, so this should be method and not function. Basically in Java, it is called methods and in C++ it is functions. So I'm just printing these values by using a loop. So initially the values 2, 2, 2 will be printed. Then I'm calling the display array. So in that I'm passing this array that I created in main method, you can see. So this is our display array method, which is static in nature and it accepts an array, which is an integer type. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm just printing inside display array method and I'm changing the values of the array. That is I'm changing it to zero, zero and zero. And then I'm again printing the array values. So zero, zero, zero will be printed. But now when we come out of the display array method, the actual array, this is ARR, which was there in the main method. Those values are also going to be changed. So after the function or after the method, when I print the array values, they're going to be zero, zero, zero. So this is that difference that is going to happen in pass by reference. So we'll see that what happens behind the scenes also to understand why exactly that happened. But let's first try to run this and see what exactly is happening. And there you go. You can see before the method, the values were two, two, two. Those were hard coded, right? So I printed them as it is. When the display array method was called, I changed those values a of zero, a of one and a of two to zero. So inside display array, they become zero, but after coming out, that is after the function, when I again try to print the value of ARR, those values also became zero. So let's try to understand what exactly happened in this case, because in pass by value, the value of the variable did not change. However, in pass by reference, since it is array is an object type and we are passing it by reference, there is some something different happening because the actual original array values are also being changed, right? So let's see that difference in a visual representation of the memory. Okay, so I have the program over here. You can see this was the exact program that we typed. So this was our display array method and this is our main method. So let's try to dry run this or let's try to go step by step. In the first line of the main method, I created int ARR. So array is an object type, right? So as I mentioned, our memory is divided into stack and heap and object types and non-primitive types are always stored on the heap memory. So what exactly is happening is this is a reference variable. Okay. So the name ARR is being stored somewhere in the stack. So ARR will be stored in the stack at some memory location. Let's say hash one zero one zero F or something like that, but it is going to refer or it is going to point to the actual object, which is in the heap memory. Okay. So in the heap memory, these memory blocks will be allocated in contiguous memory locations because array is stored in contiguous memory locations. So the array is size three, right? So two, two and two, let's say the address starts from one, zero, one, zero. And then the next address would be four bytes added to this. So right now, just to consider it in decimal numbers, the next address would be one, zero, one, four, because one integer variable would take four bytes, right? Something like that, four or eight. I don't remember exactly, but this is just for reference purpose, just to show that it is contiguous in nature. And then the next address would be one, zero, one, eight. So something like that. So this is what is happening behind the scenes in the memory. So in the stack, only the name that is the reference name is stored, but the actual reference or actual pointing is happening in the heap memory. Okay. So this happens for every object type that is every non primitive data type. Now what we're doing is we are saying system dot out dot print ln before function. So the before function text is printed on the console and then we are printing out this array. So that's why two, two, two is now printed. Now we are calling the display array method. Okay. So now when we call display array, what we're doing is we're passing ARR in this 
method as argument but this is passed as reference okay this is passed as reference so what exactly is happening is when this arr is passed and a function call is made to this method that is display array this a is created in the stack memory and this a is also pointing to the same memory location in the heap okay so this is a new variable reference variable let's say it is at some other location f a f a something like that but what is happening is there is no new variable created that is there is no new array object created because we are not using the new keyword okay so this a now points to the same memory location that's why it is said that a new reference is created that is passed by reference so now the arr also refers to the same location where the actual values are stored in the heap and this a also refers to the same memory location where it is stored in the heap now what we are saying is system dot out dot println inside display array so the next statement is printed on the screen and now you can see at this line i am changing the values of a of 0 so a of 0 is going to be this a of 1 is going to be this and a of 2 is also going to be this so i'm using this va reference variable to change the values over here to 0 okay this is what i'm doing at this line and i'm just printing them out over here so this is still inside the method display array right so this for loop is just going to print a of i which is a of 0 a of 1 and a of 2 so this is printed and lastly what is happening is after function so when we come outside the display array so this is done over here right this for loop is the last thing that is executed and then the call is again transferred back to the next line which is this so it is printed after the function so this line is printed and now again i'm using one more for loop to print arr of i which is this arr which was there in the main method but now understand that the values that arr was pointing to in the heap memory have changed by using this reference variable which was there only in the display array so when we come out of the display array this reference variable is destroyed so no longer this exists but you can see that the values are already being changed and arr also points to the same values so now that is the reason why we are getting the output as 0 0 and 0 because then when i'm printing arr of i so arr of 0 is 0 arr of 1 is 0 and arr of 2 is also 0 because they've been changed by a temporary reference variable a which was there in the display array method so i hope you understand now how pass by reference can actually change the value in the original objects that is in the original entities which were there in the calling method right so that's that's the difference between pass by value and pass by reference so in pass by reference the objects in the actual calling method values also can be changed but in pass by value they cannot be changed because a separate copy is being created so yeah this was one very major difference between pass by value and pass by reference and i hope you have a very good idea about what happens behind the scenes and how pass by value and pass by reference works once again pass by value is only for primitive types and when we are passing objects they are usually passed by reference and i don't really have an article on our official website right now but maybe when you are watching this video you will probably have an article which will have all these programs and probably a diagrammatic representation so if you don't know we already have our official website let me just show it to you so as you can see on the screen this is just a screenshot of the website because right now my internet is not working but yeah you can go to the courses section under the core java part and you probably will see an article or what i'll do is i'll just drop the link in the video description if this article is already ready so that if you are preparing your theory and if you want to prepare an answer which has the difference between pass by value and pass by reference in java you can simply copy the data and content from the article and make your answers and yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood in detail how pass by value and pass by reference works in java if you have understood and if you found this informational and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you liked it and also share it with your friends so that even they get the help also if you are new on this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel guys so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.